Next skill that we're gonna talk about is validation, which I think is one of the most important and one of the more difficult skills when we talk about families and relationships. So in DBT, we talk about dialectics. And what dialectics tell us is that multiple perspectives can be true or things that seem like opposites can exist simultaneously. And so with validation, validation is a way to handle and accept those different perspectives, even if we don't agree with what is going on or don't agree with what that perspective is. So why do we validate? Why is validation important in families? Well, the way that we experience something might be different from the way that another person experiences something. And it is so important to recognize that, that someone else might be experiencing something differently than the way that you perceive it to be true or the way that you perceive it in general. And so in validation, we are recognizing the other person's experience as true. And like it says, we're not necessarily agreeing with the behavior or agreeing with what's going on, but we are recognizing that this is how that person is experiencing it and it is impacting them in this way. And so why do we validate? We validate because validation lowers the emotional intensity of the person that you're interacting with and it increases the chance that they will remain in the conversation. If you think about a time when you were in a conversation with a family member or a loved one and you told them, oh, that's that's not a big deal. I went through that when I was your age and it's it's not really a big deal. You'll, you'll get over it, right? Which can be really common statements that we say with good intention. And when we invalidate someone, the likelihood that they are going to remain in that conversation when we tell them just to get over it drops. If I'm in a conversation and someone tells me just to get over it, I'm likely not going to want to move forward or communicate effectively. Whereas when I'm in a conversation and I am having very intense emotions and someone says, wow, that sounds like that was really, really difficult. I'm sorry that you experienced that in that way. That is going to make me feel validated and thus I'm going to want to remain in that conversation. As the emotional intensity decreases, the person's communication will reflect a more accurate and effective expression of emotions and it will become easier to validate. So when someone is in, inter in an interaction and their emotional intensity is high and we validate their experience, likely that emotional intensity is going to drop, right? And then it is going to continue to drop as we validate and talk to each other and really recognize each other's experience. And so what is validation? Let's go a little bit further into what exactly it is. So validation is finding the kernel of truth. And in DBT, we talk about this a lot. And what the kernel of truth is, is recognizing the truth in everyone's experience. And that truth may be different than your own. The way that someone experiences something may be different than the way that I experience something. And we still want to recognize the truth in everyone's experiences, even if they're different. We, validation is acknowledging someone's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. We are recognizing what their thoughts are, what their feelings are, and what the behaviors are that they engaged in. We're communicating that another person's perspective is understandable. We are not necessarily agreeing with it. What isn't validation? So validation is not agreement. We are not necessarily agreeing with someone that chose to engage in a maladaptive behavior. However, we might validate that they felt so poorly that they chose to use a coping skill such as self-harm or substance use. We're validating the emotional experience, not necessarily agreeing with the behavior that they engaged in. Validation is not validating the invalid. So we are not going to validate someone um, for you know, doing something that did not line with our family values. You know, if someone is stealing, we are not going to validate that they stole and did not follow through with family values or expectations. However, what we might validate is that they felt so desperate and need money so desperately that they chose to then steal. So again, we're not necessarily validating the invalid behavior, we're, invalid, we're validating the emotions and their experiences. 
Validation is not problem solving. This is huge, especially for parents. A lot of times something happens, something that is bad, and we as parents or even as friends, partners, and loved ones want to help people immediately problem solve it. And, and that is not effective. We eventually do want to get to problem solving, absolutely. But what we first want to do is validate the experience and the emotion. Because if we do go right to problem solving without acknowledging another person's experience, we might be problem solving the wrong thing. Validation is not compliments or the silver lining. And this can be really hard because a lot of us do this all the time with such good intention. But validation is not, you got this, or well, at least at least there's tomorrow, or at least you got home safe, right? We say those things with the hope of making people feel better. And usually we say those things with really good intentions. And when we recognize the silver lining, we're not necessarily validating what that other person's experiencing. In fact, when we use things such as cheerleading statements, you got this, it's not a big deal, you'll be fine. That's actually invalidating the person's experience. So how do we validate? In DBT, there are different levels of validation and we're gonna go over each of them now. So. Level one, the first step in validation is paying attention and being awake and aware. So this is really where you want to pay attention to the other person. Make sure that you are maintaining eye contact. Make sure that you are observing what's going on. This is where you can really use those mindfulness skills of how and what, right? You really want to be in tune with the other person and make sure that you're paying attention. You want to look interested and listen and observe. You want to avoid multitasking and again, making sure you're making eye contact. You want to stay mindful and you want to respond with your face. So you might really be nodding your head and acknowledging that other person's experience so that you know that they know that you are listening or you might be making eye contact so that they know that you're paying attention. Level two is reflecting back. And this is a really good place to start practicing validation. And so when we reflect back, we wanna to communicate to the other person that you understand what they're saying. So that might look something like, so I hear you telling me that you failed your test and you feel so shameful, is that right? We might really want to just start with simply reflecting back to the person what they're saying to us. We want to try to really get what they are thinking and what they are feeling. We want to avoid judgmental language and tone, right? So we want to avoid like, oh man, that sucks. You shouldn't have done that, that was bad. We really want to avoid those judgmental words. And we also want to make sure our tone is not judgmental as well. We want to have an open mind and be okay with correction. This is really important. Let's say that I'm talking to someone and I say, wow, that's really difficult. You must feel really sad. And they say, no, I'm not sad. I'm angry. We want to take that as effective communication and just take that as a learning experience and be okay with being corrected. For example, we might say, so you're mad at me because you think I lied just to get back at you. Did I get that right? Level three is reading minds. Now, we can't unfortunately read minds. However, we can be sensitive to what is not being said by using our mindfulness skills, specifically observe. We wanna pay attention to expressions, tone, body language, etc. Is someone crying? Is someone have their body closed off like their arms crossed or maybe a furrowed brow? We wanna show that we understand with our words and our actions. So for example, when we're asking a friend or parents for a ride at the end of a long day and the person slumps down, we might say, you look really tired. I can ask someone else for a ride. Level four is understanding based on personal factors. So we want to think about how the other person's perspective makes sense based on their personal history, state of mind, or current events. For example, if someone has social anxiety and they had to do a spelling bee in front of the school, and let's say they did not do very well in the spelling bee, we want to be mindful that they have social anxiety. And just because a spelling bee might be really easy for us, if someone has a history of social anxiety and, public, and difficulty with public speaking, we want to recognize that their experience might be different from what we think about that experience. 
So for example, if you sent a party invitation to the wrong address for a friend, let's say that has a history of difficult or unhealthy relationships, we might say, I can see why you thought I might be excluding you on purpose and I'm not. Level five, understand based on current validity. So we want to acknowledge the valid and show that given the context, the other person's thoughts, feelings, and ancient actions make sense. Wow, your teacher yelled at you in front of the entire classroom and then didn't check in with you afterwards? That must have felt awful and embarrassing. We want to really recognize their experience based on um, the other person's, ex I'm sorry, based on the other person's experience and based on the context of the situation. So for example, if someone is upset or you are criticized for not taking out the garbage on your day, admit that it is your day and then take it out. Another phrase that we might say is anyone in your position would feel that way. This makes sense to me. And level six is radical genuineness. This is very, very important. We want to show equality and we want to be ourselves as a person and not as a position. And when I teach this with parents, one of the things that I really highlight that I think is very important is when we are practicing validation, those roles of parent child um, really don't matter in that moment. To validate, we simply just need to be a person to a person. And so I think when we, especially as parents, are starting to practice validation, this is really important to remember. In this moment, all we're doing is recognizing that the other person is having an experience. We are not necessarily looking at it from you know a parent to a child role. We're simply validating what the other person is experiencing. We want to avoid treating the other person as fragile or incompetent. And remember that validation is not the same thing as empathy. However, in order to validate, you do need to have empathy. So now we're going to do a quick exercise and model some invalidation and model some validation for you. And remember, when you're practicing this, it is really easy to invalidate without even realizing it. And so we're just going to quickly model a few conversations. So I've had to repack my dishwasher every single time my roommate puts anything in it the last two weeks because she's not occupying the right amount of space. And I have to realign everything so that we can maximize our space and not increase our water bill. Dude, really? That is that that big of a problem? I don't even have a dishwasher. I mean, can't you just... Can you just accept that your roommate's not good at packing the dishwasher and just clean your dishes? That would be invalidation. <laughs> that would be invalidation. So what I did was I kind of minimized Bree's experience, right? So she's sharing me a frustration about, you know, having a roommate that doesn't necessarily um, pack the dishwasher effectively, right? And so then they're running the dishwasher more often and their water bill's increasing. And here I am saying, oh, man, at least you have a dishwasher, right? Like, is that really something to complain about? Now I'm going to model what validation would look like. Can you just say it again? So I'm really frustrated right now because I keep packing our dishwasher over and over again every time my roommate puts something in it because she doesn't do it effectively and our water bill is gonna go through the roof. That must be so frustrating. I know that you know you shared with me that you've tried to talk to her about that and it sounds like she just continues not to be mindful and now you guys are spending more money and that's really hard. I mean, we're not making a lot of money to begin with. You must be so frustrated. I would, I would be really upset. Thank you. So that is validation, right? So I'm recognizing that even if I don't think it's a big deal because, you know, having a dishwasher is a privilege, right? Brie is having a really hard time with her roommate, you know, not being mindful about running the dishwasher multiple times and increasing their water bill significantly. And so what I did there was recognize her experience and how she has had to have this conversation over and over. And so validation really can be, you know, as we said, you're starting to reflect back. Brie told me that, you know, she's re getting really frustrated. And so I might say, wow, like, 
it sounds like you are getting more and more frustrated because you've had to have the same conversation over and over. So I'm really just reflecting back what she's saying to me and recognizing her experience. And so just a little, um, just a little more information on validation. When you are practicing it, you know, some of the feedback that we've gotten before is that, um, you know, it can feel like you're patronizing someone, right? Or that, you know, maybe you're, you're being rude. And so you really do want to practice that radical genuineness. Like you might even say, you know, I know you want me to validate you and I just want to let you know I'm trying, but I'm still practicing. And so can you let me know if how I validate you feels right? So you want to ask for that feedback because sometimes, you know, me saying, oh, that sucks, might come across as patronizing. And so we want to recognize that and just ask for feedback when we start, when we start practicing validation. 